Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and independent consultant, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 82, we'll take a look at defining what is really meant by testability from an architecture characteristics standpoint. There's many architecture characteristics, illities, that we talk about in architecture, and one of those happens to be testability. Now, testability is defined as the ease of and also the completeness of testing. It really is encompassing both of these concepts. Uh, we may have ease of testing through automation of different unit tests and scenario tests, things that we can automate to make it easy, quite frankly, to just kick off a script to run all of our tests. However, testability is also defined not only by the ease of testing, but also the completeness of testing. And that is when we make a change, a very small change, let's say, to a very large application. Um, my coverage is generally only that portion of the application. I'm really not testing anything else. And of course, we get the usual statements, but I didn't make any changes, so I didn't break anything. And of course, we know through coupling and stuff like this and large monolithic applications, of course, there is always a chance of breaking something, which is why we should test everything, um, but rarely do. So let's take a look at how testability is related to architecture, or more specifically, how architecture influences testability. Now, don't forget the definitions, the ease of and completeness of testing. Levels of testability start significantly increasing as we move towards distributed architectures, including microservices. As a matter of fact, starting here at layered architecture is probably one of the lower or lowest areas of testability. Now, we may get ease of testing through automation. However, the completeness of testing is usually what suffers. It's really hard to completely test every single aspect of a large monolithic layered architecture. And this is primarily due to many factors, not only being a monolith, but also that layered architectures are technically partitioned architectures, which means I've got many layers of technical concerns, presentation, business, all the way down to data. And because things are tightly coupled, generally I don't have that completeness of testing, so I'm inducing a lot of risk. However, if we move kind of up the curve, we notice that modular monoliths which are also deployed as single deployment units, increase testability a little bit. And this is primarily due to the fact that modular monoliths are domained partitioned architectures. And so rather than partitioning by the technical usage of that particular domain, modular monoliths encompass that domain together. We can actually look at dependencies between domain components rather than classes. And so therefore, we can kind of compartmentalize a lot of the domains a lot easier in modular monoliths. Therefore, not guaranteeing, of course, but decreasing the risk of breaking something else not included in, quote, our domain. But as we start moving up the chain, notice that we increase a little bit more in terms of when we move to service-based architecture. Now, service-based architecture has a couple of good points and bad points about testability. Uh, the good points about testability are that now, like a modular monolith, functionality is scoped or partitioned in terms of a domain. We have domain-based coarse-grained services. Uh, this allows us not only to partition a domain, but have, as a, have it as a separately deployed unit, um, what I call a domain service. Um, however, a uh, couple of things. Coarse grain services still require the responsibility of a developer to test that entire functionality. And so we still have a large testing scope. But, but more to the point, with service-based architecture, we generally tend to share a database and also share a schema. One of the advantages, as a matter of fact, of service-based architecture. However, a change to a particular domain may in fact incur a change in the structure of the underlying tables and therefore might require more changes to other services. And so we do have that data coupling aspect, um, which does become somewhat problematic with testability. However, look what happens when we move to microservices as an architecture style. Uh, just by the structure of our code, in other words, the architecture, we have significantly increased testability. As a matter of fact, done correctly, it's at the highest levels of testability we can actually have. Um, because microservices are 
separately deployed single purpose services, and those changes are generally isolated to one or two microservices. And perhaps more importantly, any of the structural changes to data are self-contained within that bounded context, only influencing that particular service. And so I can get much better completeness of testing. As a matter of fact, let's see how we can actually measure testability. Whenever measuring architectural characteristics from an objective measuring standpoint, it's necessary to capture certain information and then measure based on that information. So some things we can actually capture. First of all, <clears throat> with any given feature or bug fix, I want to capture the sizing of those because what I want to start capturing is the amount of time it took to test. Now, that kind of points to the ease of testing. Because the faster I can test, that means generally the easier it is. But there's also the aspect of completeness. So the other thing I can actually capture are errors from logs, from the back end, from the user interface, reported or even non-reported errors. And I can actually capture the particular API request or that ID or that endpoint and the corresponding date. And now what I can measure based on capturing this information is, first of all, the average testing hours for features or bugs within a domain or an application um, based on particular sizings. Now, the sizings could be based on story points. Uh, the sizings could be based on a small, medium, large. However you choose that sizing within that size, let's say small or a two-point story, um, has my testing hours increased or decreased on average? And what I'm looking for there generally are trends. And also, I can actually track the number of errors and bugs over time. Now, let's take a look at these measurements. Uh, first of all, the number of errors over time is a really good indicator of testability. If we have ease of testing and completeness of testing, what I don't want to have happen is this kind of thing, where over time we start increasing the number of bugs. Now, this may be telltale signs of a lot of things, but overall it means that I am not achieving a high level of testability because I'm introducing more bugs over time every time I change the code. What I really want to see, especially through some architectural refactorings, is this kind of model where we start to demonstrate this decrease in the number of errors and bugs over time. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we can write fitness functions, everybody, that run as continuous fitness functions in production as we're gathering this information uh, to be able to do the following. For example, um, send me an alert uh, if the number of errors increase by a certain percentage, let's say 20%, over a certain period of time, let's say over a two-month period of time. Uh, this gives me a, a, a trend to say over a certain period of time, a couple of months, um, we're not seeing any decrease in the bugs that we have, and we're undergoing architecture refactoring, which kind of may point to some other problems related to testability. All right, fantastic. So for more information, um, Neil and I talk about a lot of the characteristics, um, including testability. Um, basically, in the first third of our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture by myself and Neil Ford, I've provided both the links to Amazon to be able to get either a Kindle or a hard copy, or also on the learning platform on O'Reilly. Um, also, of course, Software Architecture Monday is a great place to go for more information where these lessons are all housed. And also, I do both public and private training. I've got the link there for my private training classes, as well as upcoming events, uh, which show the places I'm at at different conferences or public events where you can find me. So anyways, this has been Lesson 82, Defining Testability. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and thank you so much for listening.